in our day to day living that shows that gives the evidence of circumcision of heart and now he calls upon the seed of abraham the descendants of abraham he says what therein and ye shall find rest for your souls but he said we will not walk therein we will not walk therein year after year old year new year we will not walk therein we will walk according to the imagination of our heart no circumcision of heart if they died in that condition and they didn't know when they will die who knows tomorrow who knows when they will die if they died in that condition if you die in that condition with a stony heart with an uncircumcised heart where will you spend eternity look at number two here number two the neglect of inward conversion for outward conformity they were satisfied with outward conformity and that's pharisaism look at matthew chapter 23 verse 25 want you scribes and pharisees hypocrites now if christ the son of god said woe unto you scribes and pharisees the people who are rejoicing were not like other people and we don't eat like other people we don't drink like other people we don't wear what other people wear they are gentiles we are the children of abraham and jesus said woe unto you why for ye make clean ye make plain ye make white the outside of the car and of the platter but within they're full of extortion and excess within the heart had not been cleansed the heart had not been circumcised the heart had not been transformed but on the outside they made clean the outside of the cup and the outside of the platter look at verse 26 it says in verse 26 thou blind pharisee thou blind pharisee if we're not converted on the inside and we just come to the church and we copy how the sisters dress how they tie their scarf how they deal without the painting and the palming and we only conform on the outside but we're not born again our inward heart inward nature not transformed will be like the blind pharisees will be thinking that god sees as man sees but man looks on the outward appearance but god looks on the heart the blind pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup cleanse first what a great mistake we make somebody is wearing slacks he wants to come to church you say no you cannot come you must drop the slacks so that you can come that doesn't get them born again somebody is wearing jewelry and uh, you're inviting her to church and then you say but as you follow me we're going to deeper life bible church you must not wear that outside cleansing all that means that we're like the blind pharisees somebody is uh, coming uh, and is wearing whatever and then we say you cannot come like that clean uh, the outside force then come how we have slid into the habit and the culture 
of the Pharisees. Let them come. Compel them to come. Bring them in the way they are. You don't clean the fish before they are caught. Catch the fish first. Get them out of the sea of humanity. And then when they come, the Lord will deal an inner work in them. It is after that inner work is done, then the Lord will lead them to cleanse the outside. I want to follow you to church. <laughs> You want to follow me to church or polygamists? You cannot come now. Do this first. No. I want to follow you to church, but I'm the second wife, I'm the third wife. No, you cannot come now. Do this first. How do they do that without grace? They need the grace of God. It's the conversion. It's the inward conversion by the grace of God that prepares them to live the way God wants them to live. The blind Pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. Verse 27. In verse 27, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear, appear, appear beautiful outside, but are within full of dead men's bones and of fall of cleanness. Verse 28 want you even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men with what you've done without grace now the way i dress any executive corporate person can dress like that this one doesn't show being born again the shoes you wear any corporate person can, you know, wear that. That doesn't show being born again. And the same thing with the women. What we wear, the way we tie our headgear. What do people do like that too? That's not the evidence that our hearts are converted or circumcised. Ye appear righteous unto men. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and of iniquity. Verse 33, in verse 33, it says, Ye serpents, they appeared beautiful outside. Ye serpents, they cleansed the outside. Ye serpents, they were whited sepulchers. Ye serpents, they were the people that were run to win a proselyte. Ye, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Look at number three here. In number three here is the non acceptance of flesh circumcision without with fleshly corruption there is flesh circumcision but then there's also joined with that fleshly corruption look at exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 you're looking at israelites who are circumcised in the flesh but look at what happened in verse 7 exodus 32 verse 7 and the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. You know what? They couldn't reverse their flesh circumcision. Once you are circumcised in the flesh, you are circumcised. You have lost that bag that collects, that gathers together bacteria, it's gone. There's no way you can reverse that. But they corrupted themselves even though they were circumcised in the flesh. Are they not people? They have their outward conformity. They have their outward dressing. 
they're not wearing this or wearing that and yet they can corrupt themselves their outward appearance they have to keep that because it is that that makes other people meet them on the road and say sister so and so how are you it is that outward conformity that makes people to say brother so and so nice to meet you they keep that but there's corruption that now comes in they have corrupted themselves look at verse 33 in verse 33 and the lord said unto moses whosoever have sinned against me him will i blot out of my book the people who are circumcised in the flesh who go into corruption they are blotted out of the book of life the circumcision still remains there and they may carry that circumcision to hell because inwardly they do not have the conversion the transformation they ought to have Isaiah chapter 1 reading from verse 4 Isaiah chapter 1 we're reading from verse 4 it says ah sinful nation a generation of corruptors they were sinful and then they also became those who corrupted other people sinful nation a people led with iniquity a seed of evil doers children that are corruptors they corrupt themselves they are circumcised and yet they now become the corruptors of other people by their example by their instruction by their lifestyle by their obstinacy they now corrupt other people it says they are forsaking the lord they have provoked the holy one of israel unto anger they are gone away backward gone away backward they were still circumcised but then that circumcision is not acceptable to god because of corruption in second peter chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 19 second peter chapter 2 verse 19 while they promised them liberty they themselves are servants of corruption they even promise other people they show them how to be free from sin they show them how to be clean they show them how to be converted and they give them promises of liberty but they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in a bondage in verse 20 verse 20 tells us for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they were born again they escaped all the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of christ our savior it says they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end of them is worse than the beginning i pray that this heart circumcision heart cleansing heart purging the grace of god that comes to our lives and make us new afresh i pray it will be the possession of every one of us in jesus name Amen. amen a good amen. amen point number three now in point number three in 
imperative heart circumcision in the new covenant imperative is something that you cannot do without number one here is heart truly circumcised by god number two is true holiness trustworthy circumcision by god and then three is heaven only for the transformed the circumcised by god number one is the heart truly circumcised by god look at jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 behold the days come says the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah look at verse 33 there in verse 33 it says but this shall be the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my law in their inward parts i will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their god i thought it was already their god uh -uh. they were circumcised in the body on his day they didn't follow up on that through repentance and faith in the lord and they derailed and they lived like the pagans like the heathen they need to obey the word of god so the flesh circumcision became nothing nullified and old but now it said i'll make a new covenant for them and I will put my laws in their heart and write that in their hearts and then I will be their God and they shall be my people we're looking at Hebrews chapter 8 Hebrews chapter 8 we're reading from verse 6 in Hebrews chapter 8 Reading from verse 6, but now I see obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. He's talking about Christ. And here is what Christ will do. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, he tells us. For finding fault with them he says behold the days come says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah look at verse 10 in verse 10 he says for this is the covenant there's a new covenant now through christ that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my laws in their mind i will put my laws in their mind and write them in their heart and i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people heart circumcised by god look at number two number two is the holiness trustworthy circumcision by god the holiness that makes that circumcision trustworthy before the lord luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant he doesn't forget he says 
they answer the covenant I will make with them. And when we come to the Lord, he remembers that holy covenant. In verse 73, it says in verse 73, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham, the father of those who have faith in the Lord. Then in verse 74, that he will grant us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear might serve him without fear when he fulfills the covenant in our hearts we serve him without the fear of the pharisees and the sadducees we serve him without the fear of being cast out from their company from the synagogue we serve him without the fear of that imposing personality in our lives if i don't conform if i don't do that they'll do this to me they'll do that to me we serve god without fear when we're circumcised in heart the people who are being like authority figures in our lives. I remember when I became born again, the authority figure in my life had been under his tutelage, under his authority from many years before that time. And every time I saw him as the giant figure, and he used to use a particular word, he'll say peremptory. That means anything he says, final. But now, to come to the Lord and to serve the Lord without fear of that old personality and to come forth and to come true and to say, I have a new master, I have a new Lord, I have a new prince over my life. The Lord will circumcise our hearts and he will make us to live and serve him without fear. In verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him before him is always there walk thou before me and be thou perfect in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life sometimes they say the higher you go the cooler you become but a christian who is circumcised in heart you are going higher, higher in position, higher in authority, higher in privilege. The same in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Sometimes they say when people get old and they are older, they think like little children and they go back to the baby stage of life and the things they used to cherish they cannot cherish them anymore they are now more of the flesh than of the spirit because they are old old and old but you know what the scripture says it says when we're circumcised in heart we serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life sometimes when people are eager to have a particular privilege before the lord they are consecrated they're holy they're walking righteously before the lord they're looking for a particular favor once they get that favor once they get that privilege once they get that blessing I've got what I was looking for. And since I've got it now, 
I can relax. I don't have to walk in holiness and righteousness anymore. What I was looking for, and I was careful because if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He has heard me. He has blessed me. He has put me there in that position. So why do I have to be holy anymore? In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life before we have the privilege when we have the privilege after we've got the privilege we're still walking in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives we're looking at number three now number three is the heaven only for the transformed circumcised in heart look at matthew chapter 5 verse 8 it says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god even if there were no other receive the fact that to see god and these are the words of jesus this is what he said that if we're going to see god on the final day there is no alternative there's no other way there's no other road Many roads may lead to Rome, but only one road leads to heaven. And it is the purity of heart, the circumcision of heart, the cleansing of our heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I pray you will see God. What's the, you know, what's the prophet? Early will wake up do morning cry was a prophet we traverse everywhere we evangelize was a prophet we deny ourselves of this this and that was a prophet we come wholeheartedly to the church every time serving the Lord was a prophet we deny ourselves of this this and that so we can fit in to the church we belong to if at long last we do not see god if on the final day the heart was not cleansed not circumcised the heart was not purified and with all the denials of the sacrifice everything we cannot see him jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god when we're sick we pray and pray and pray so we can be healed that's for the body when we have a challenge no child we pray and pray and pray and fast so we can have a child and when we have a job we're looking for we pray we consecrate we tell people to join us in prayer so we can have that job when we're not happy with our situation physical situation material situation we pray and pray and pray and fast so we can have a change in this situation but the greatest thing purity of heart how much do we pray how much do we consecrate how much do we seek the lord and yet this the greatest thing we can have that will qualify us for heaven you might be the healthiest person on earth that doesn't qualify you for heaven you might be the richest person on earth that doesn't qualify you for heaven you might be the one that has the most perfect marriage in life that doesn't qualify you for heaven. You may have many children, progressing children, and children that are making it in life. That doesn't take you to heaven. The one single thing that makes heaven's door to be open to us when we leave this earth 
is the circumcision of heart, purity of heart, cleansing of the heart, transparency of heart before the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. On that final day, as Stephen has given his testimony before all those Jewish people, even though they didn't accept his message, he looked up to heaven, he saw God. And he saw the Son of God, Jesus Christ, Savior, Sanctifier, coming King, baptized by the Holy Ghost. He saw him and he said, I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. That's enough. That's the greatest reward that man could have for everything that had happened unto him. And he said, Lord, count this not against them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, receive my spirit. That's good. That's what we need. That's what you want. Blessed at the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I pray you will see God. Here on earth, you will see God. At the time of prayer, you will see God. At the crossroads of life, you will see God. When there are challenges in life, well, you will see God. And when the rapture will take place, and the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them, you will be among the number. You will see God. You will see God. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And though the skin wants might destroy this flesh, yet I know that in my flesh I shall see him. Pray for that. Let that sink deep into your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for only they shall see God. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. That this heart circumcision, you'll have it, you'll keep it, you'll leave it out, and when the Lord will come, you'll see the Lord. Brethren, what a day, what a word. Have you ever seen it in this fashion so clear? God has spoken to us. We prayed in the morning that God will open our hearts and give us his word. So he has done. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 10 commanded to be circumcised every child born into the family. Today we know, we learn that verse 1 to walk holy before God is more important than the fleshly circumcision that identifies the Jew as a Jew. Let's pursue the important thing. The form of religion is not as important as the power of religion. Coming here, participating in the worship is not as important as going back home with a new heart, a heart yielded to the Lord. Let's pray. We have heard this morning from the word of God. It is the Lord our God that will circumcise our hearts. 
In the physical form, the child does not circumcise himself or herself. It is God. It is the parents. It is our Father. If we yield ourselves to him in prayer, that's what we should be praying for right now. And say, Lord, I surrender myself. Here am I. This is my heart. Circumcise this heart of mine. When you do that, Lord, I will know. Because the evidence is that I'm going to love you above every other thing. I'm going to love you above whatever people may present. The motivation to love God entirely from all our hearts is the result of heart circumcision. That is what is going to change our lives. The change must come from within, not from without. That was the mistake of the children of Israel when they came to rely so much on the outward form, outward indication, outward sign of the covenant, but the heart, which is supposed to be the, re the re residence of that covenant, was neglected. We must not fall into that. It's not good to, it's not. It's not enough to come to church. We must ask God to give us this thing that distinguishes us from the rest of humanity, from those outside Christendom, the true Christians. It's not a Jew that is one outwardly. Circumcision is not that of the, of the hand on, in the flesh. And God knows that. God looks at our hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ was very, very plain. He condemned all the hypocrisy that arises out of lack of heart circumcision. We give more attention to outward things, to be seen of men, to be looked upon as this or that. But inwardly, nothing is going on. Inwardly, maybe there's rottenness, dead men's bone, and all kinds of uncleanness. But God wants the cleanliness to start from within. As we present our heart, I said, Lord, this thing you have spoken to us today, Lord, I cannot do it by myself. But I am willing to submit to you do it. I will no longer be in that middle part. I want to come over completely. I want to sell my heart to the Lord. I want to be a Christian through and through. The struggle must be over. I have decided today, this heart of mine, give it over to the Lord. Pray that God, who has given all this word because he wants to do it, we give you the grace to surrender so that he, he will have his way. The Lord, the Lord wants to do it. He wants to give us a new heart. The heart of flesh that loves God, but he insisted that we must pray for it. We must open our mouths and ask for it. He wants to do it, but he will not compel us. He wants to do it, but he doesn't want us to just wish it could be done. You have to pray from your heart and say, Lord, I am pleading. You have already promised. Now do as you have promised, as I yield to you.
we get back to our families and our everyday life and begin to see newness of life, the heart change, brings in attitudes change, character change. Everything becomes new because the heart is renewed in Christ. It's not the circumcision that is made of hand. Everybody is holding on to that. Everybody seems to be satisfied with that. As, for, as long as I am identified publicly as a Christian, but today the law has told us the truth about this matter. Blessed are the pure in heart. They are the only one that we see God. As our father was preaching, you, you look at what the things we have sacrificed and are still sacrificing. Think about the, the, the things that are important to us. We have prayed, we have fasted, we have enlisted others to help us in prayer. We have done so many things. What if after all these things have been done, and then at the last we don't see God? Just because of what we could have easily done, yielding our hearts, let our hearts be made up from today. We are going to be sanctified Christians, entirely sanctified leaving no place untouched, keeping, no, anything, keeping nothing from God. It is a wonderful thing, like every other thing that comes from the Lord. But the, the, you know, the deceitfulness of sin will tell us that we are going to lose out on this and that. It's a lie. The devil is a murderer. The devil has no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is the originator, deceiving people, the deceitfulness of sins. And the things that it, the, we, we have been made to think we can win by continuing in sin, by half-hearted Christianity. We come and go, we spend hours, every time, every week, many things are, what if because we refuse to yield our heart to God and say, God, I sell this heart to you. Take it completely. Whatever you decree, I will do. Even if people say they will put me out of the synagogue, so let it be. Let me just be in your hand. Even if people say I will no longer be their friend, they're no, no longer going to accept me. So let it be. If God is for us, who can be against us? Pray that God will help you after today, today, after today. The issue of sanctification, entire sanctification, will be done, finally. And we enter into a higher realm of walking with God. We begin to enjoy closer intimacy with our God. We have a greater assurance of the hope of glory, which God who cannot lie has promised to those whose hearts are sanctified. I want you to pray. It's going to be a new day, a day to be remembered. You will know it. It's an experience. You will know it. You will know it. When all that struggle to do the will of God, not to do the will of God, when that battle is over and you enter into the peace of a yielded heart to the Lord. Peace. Once you know the will of God, there's no struggle. 
That means you have grown in your spiritual life to the point where the gravity of sin has no effect on you again. And all your movement is upward. Your work with God is a daily enjoyment. Then you enter into a real enjoyment of what Christ suffered for. What Christ preached and urged us to get into it. The form of any, any the, the possibility of hypocrisy, wanting to please men, giving pressures that are not real, that are not coming from the heart. And the judge of all men who looks at the heart, he knows where we are. And then what does it profit us even, even though we impress our fellow men, impress our pastor, impress everybody? But the real judge has a good record, the real record. On that day, we fail to see God it will be an eternal calamity, an eternal tragedy. It will never happen to us. If we ask, we shall receive. If we ask for this newness of heart, we shall receive it. Once you are born again, you are a child of God, press on. Sell your heart to your God. Let the Lord your God sanctify your heart so that you can love him the way he wants you to love you. That is the end. That's what God wants to do. After he has cleansed us and washed us by his word and all the filthiness of outward sin, everything is gone. He did not stop. He said, the work has not finished at all. I'm going to give you another heart after I have cleansed you by the washing of the word. Then I will give you a new heart. I will remove the stony heart. I will give you the, the heart of flesh. Then I will pour my spirit into you. Allow God to complete his project. We have stayed on this level too long. And God has been waiting, talking, talking to us. Today, he has, he, has, he has really spoken to us in a way that we can no more resist. Today, let, by the grace of God, we live here, sanctified believers, loving God above all the gains of this world, all the acceptance of men, and all the other things that... The enemy has lied against us to say that these things are as important as they are, as, as, as they are made to be. The Lord is waiting for us. The Lord is waiting for us. He wants to sanctify us wholly, entirely, completely in the day, in the night, Right in the office, in the marketplace, it's a complete change. It's a change of our nature. Pray and pray, my brethren. God is faithful. When he makes a promise, that's what we learned this morning. He will surely back it up with fulfillment. But God will not compare. If you want to stay still in the middle ground, that's not the will of God. Let's cross over and break that bridge and turn our back to the world from which we have been called out. That's why Jesus died. So that he may deliver us, completely deliver us from this corrupt world in which we dwell today. He will put us in a new world where Jesus is truly the king and reigns supremely without rival. And we begin to enjoy something we never enjoyed before. 
we begin to see the fruitfulness of sanctification, the power of prayer, the closer walk with God, the joy that the world does not know, cannot know, cannot define, cannot explain. That surrender that nothing perturbs us anymore. Nothing. Nothing. Because there's nothing between us and the King of Glory. Jesus name we pray Amen. Heavenly Father we we don't know what, how to thank you for coming to us this morning in such an explosive way this message of sanctification today Father we believe is going to be a landmark in the life of the church Amen. Father because you have given us given it to us so explicitly and you have delved into so many things to bring it home. Lord, I pray your investment this morning upon us through your servant will not be in vain. Amen. Oh, Lord God, whatever you have promised, you will do. And today is that day. Lord, you promised us that a day will come. And it, at the time you spoke, it, it, it was in the future. That future is here. You said you make a new covenant with us. Not like the old one that was not even well kept. But this one will be different. Because you are going to write it in our hearts. Because the old one was faulty. This new one, you took care to remove whatever will make it faulty. Lord, take up your diamond pain. Write it indelibly, in, that indelibly in our hearts that we have a covenant to work with our God all the days of our life. Amen. Father, write it in such a way that we will not forget it. Amen. In our every decision, in our everything that we do, we will see it right in front of our eyes. And so we will be guided by your word. Sanctize our heart entirely. Amen. We are willing and we are ready and we'll give it to you to do the work that you can do. Our pastor said that no child in Israel can circumcise himself. Even when they boast of fleshly circumcision, they were still wrong, even, even at that level, because at eight days old, their Lord Father they couldn't have even circumcised themselves in the flesh. Father, everything is up to you and in your hand. We surrender our whole body, our whole spirit, our whole soul unto you. Father, perfect your work in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. All that you have proposed when you thought of a new covenant and you said that this new covenant will have better promises, this new covenant we have many things far above the old. Lord, I pray that the reality of that promise will begin to be seen in individual lives in Jesus' name. Amen. But I pray that as we go home, this word will not allow us to rest until we yield. And when we yield, oh Lord, may the joy, the peace, the certainty, the assurance, let it flood our hearts. And we'll do everything within our power. And we'll pray with all our hearts that this experience will not depart from us. Whatever the world may hereafter dangle in front of us, is it promotion, is it worldly wealth, money, and all the things the world can afford, they will become like dross as we look unto the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Keep this word alive, O Lord. Don't let the best of the earth take it away. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.
Jesus' name, we pray. My brethren, we will still remain in the mood of prayers. The psalmist says in Psalm 144, Blessed be the Lord, my strength. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, who teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My, good, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. This is the great God we are serving. Justin King is the one that has jealously kept you. He has never allowed the hand of sin to sway you away from the kingdom of God. Give God the glory. Thank him. He has never allowed anything to push you away. Push away your motivation in the service of God. Push away your motivation in the consecration which you are putting in. Give God that glory. Thank him, my brother, my sister. Exalt his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 37, verse 15, And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seeketh thou? What seeketh thou? My sister, why are you here today? My brother, why are you here today? Are you just here for coming sake? Or are you here for some specific things that God must do for you? Why are you here? I want you to outline those things and tell the Lord. Almighty God, I am not here for fun. I am not here for a routine. I must come for combined service. Never. That is not the reason I am here today. Open your mouth, tell God, why are you here today? Talk to God. I know you are not here just for fun, to come and see friends, to come and see people. Why are you here? My sister, why are you here? The newcomers joining us today, why are you here? To come and see the building? That shouldn't be as the essence why you are here. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Luke chapter 24, and in verse 45, then opened he their understanding. Our Lord Jesus Christ opened he, opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, that they might understand the scriptures. My brother, my sister, the scriptures, they are the words of God. The words of God is the creating potent power that made the whole world. The day I understand the scriptures, there will be recreation in my life. The day you understand the scriptures, 
recreation will come into your life. Open your mouth, tell God, Almighty God, I am here today to understand the scriptures that recreated the whole world. Father, open my heart. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God. That the Almighty God will open your heart. Recreate your heart. Expunge every stony heart there. And replace it with heart of flesh. To understand the scriptures. Pray that as we are praying here, even our brethren that are yet to come, the same thing will happen to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, let us pray that every tool, every instrument that God will use today, that God's anointing.
I don't know. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we hearing me, please? If you are hearing me, just unmute yourself so that we can start. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, good evening, brethren. God bless you, sirs. God bless you, man. Oh, yeah. Happy new month to every one of us in Jesus' name. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Happy new month to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us, let us pray, please. Let's close our eyes for prayers. Our God and our Father, we want to Amen. tonight. Thank you very much for the privilege you have given to us to gather together once again after quite a long time. Thank you once again for bringing us to this new month, the very first day in the month of September. Thank you for the journey so far. Thank you for all the accomplishments of your grace and of your work in our lives. And thank you once again for the privilege we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come tonight to